Real face right there. Everything is NZXT's new H1 ITX Mini PC packs a ton of high-end gaming components in a small package, bringing small form factor gaming to an all-new high. The 140mm water cooler keeps the Intel 9900K CPU nice and cool, while the separated GPU compartment maximizes cooling efficiency and performance for the NVIDIA RTX 2070 Super video card. To see a complete spec list and to learn more about the H1 Mini PC from NZXT, click the link in the description below. Look, they fell off just since I set them there. Now I know a bunch of people are like, yeah, Jerry, what do you expect? Sticky stuff doesn't taste sticky. Just like all of you guys swore that the tape wasn't gonna hold in my studio and hold those boards up, which are they still up there or not, Phil? That's what I thought. This is my fault because when I drove the holes and stuff, sawdust kind of got down there and I didn't do a good job cleaning it off. And then when I stuck these back on, they don't stay. Then I decided I want to do this a different way now because one of these killed my internet in the room too because it fell on the plug and was like, and then destroyed the socket. So I'm mad at these things. And there's all kind of, ah, nails. <laughs> so there's nails in these. <laughs> I do want to point out something. In that video, I'm, I'm part two or three, two, part two, three, I think. It looks like my hand is like right here as I'm sawing. I'm not, I was holding it like back here. But the, the angle that Phil was at made my hand look like I was like right next to it. So trust me, I, I know how to use a freaking, um, whatever that thing's called. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know how to use a, a, a real arm saw. We went and we got all these pre-treated boards. They're fairly straight. These are pine. I'm gonna cut them down to the right length and I'm just gonna make the plank, plank wall like I wanted to all along. I'm gonna be stapling these to that board through the backside. And then what I'm gonna end up doing um, is staining it to match like I did that ring. But what I've also done is you see these holes here? Is I've added a third spot to put the TV mount. So now I can get the TV more centered on this like I wanted to all along. Because the reason why I wasn't gonna do that before is I didn't want to take it off the wall. Now it's off the wall, so I might as well do it the right way. I can make your hands clap. <laughs> if anyone watching me does woodwork, then you know this is some of the more therapeutic part of woodworking is just seeing all the green and the color come out. I told you I know how to work with wood. <laughs> okay, that green came out awesome. Holy crap. Yeah. It's four o'clock in the afternoon. And we're right back to where we started at 9 a.m. this morning. <laughs> Actually, no, we're still behind because it's not back on the wall yet. So here it is, here's how it turned out. These are one by four inch selected pine, which means it's pine without knots and stuff like that. It's more expensive. Uh, this whole piece cost me about $120 in lumber for this. It's already dry to the touch, but I'm just gonna let it fully dry more. We gotta go to um, Guitar Center and get some stuff for the microphone set up because I do want to live stream and all that. I've got to fix the internet plug that the thing that this is replacing destroyed. None of this was planned for today. Well, it's been several days now. A couple things I want to do though. One, I've got a crap ton of nano leafs that I want to put on the wall. I've got a digital lock I want to put on the door. It's not smart controlled, but that's fine, whatever. Just to kind of keep my kids. The first thing that happened when this couch and stuff went in here and the TV was working, the kids were like, yay, with all their crap sitting here. I'm like, no. You have a living room, you have a playroom, both of which have a TV and a couch for you to go do your own crap in, and the loft. So you have three places, but no, dad finally has his place and we're gonna try and take it over. So I'm putting a lock on this door. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> and then I wanna put a ceiling fan up here because um, ventilation and airflow are important and I get hot when I game. So this is the, the lock I installed. I'm not too happy with it though. Um, we learned that you can only set the default state of the lock to either be unlocked, and then when you put in the, like you can't lock it from out here, or default unlocked, or locked, locked as you can see, which means you then put in the code to make it unlock. So basically every time you shut this door right now, it would be locked. You need the code or the key to get in. The key is just an override. You can't even take the key out. So right now, right, locked. But you can't take the key out. We think it's a really weird setup, but it's designed to keep my kids out. And if I'm too stupid to figure it out, it might work for them. But the last thing I need to install before we're ready to do this reveal is going to be obviously more lights. And for that, um, I've got a Nano Leaf canvas setup because nothing says YouTube like more lights. 
I'm just not sure if I have enough of them though. Yeah, you need more. <laughs> All right, so here it is, my ultimate nerd cave that I've spent three solid weeks on, which to be honest, isn't that long considering how many people will actually work on this stuff. There's a lot to kind of show you. There were some design changes we did. We kind of showed you guys in the vlog some of the things we redid, like this backboard. Um, I haven't even showed you really the desk setup yet. So let's go ahead and start over here in the areas you guys are already kind of familiar with. There is a lot of Philips Hue in this space. And the reason for that is I wanted flexibility. I wanted to be able to control colors, I want to be able to control scenes, I want to be able to do um, anything really. And I had LifeX, and I have LifeX in this house in my kid's room. And I've had nothing but a hard time with internet dropouts where they're forgetting the network and constantly have to be resynced. And then they updated their app and it's even worse than it was before. So I just completely refused to use LifeX in this area considering I already had some, which I decided to just basically not use and, and start all over with Hue. And although Hue isn't perfect, it is definitely um, solid because it connects to its own hub, which I have mounted on the back of the entertainment center here. And that hub is connected to wired ethernet so it never drops out. And then it even has this wireless remote control, which is kind of nice. So you do have the ability to, let's say everything's turned on right now with my voice, I can one touch turn everything off if I want to. Now this is the... What? There's games and stuff that you can play on this. And Bud Light for humans. You can actually play games on this. My, my, I almost said my wife. My kids do. They'll play like Simon and uh, Memory where you have to match colors and all that sort of stuff. Um, but this is the Nanoleaf Canvas. It's fairly new. They have a newer one coming out that's a hexagon. They're very expensive, but I kind of feel like it's kind of like the prerequisite now for any room to be ultimate to have these voice commanded lights right here. Now you guys have already seen this. I haven't changed anything with this since you've seen it last. I can still control it with my voice. Uh, so I set the TV hutch to purple. So all of that is still perfectly, and you'll notice there's a little difference of color on the top because the paint on this glass changes the, the warmth of the color. So it adds a little bit of yellow to every color which is fine. But what I thought recently was like, oh man, if I had thought of this earlier, these tiles would fit under here perfectly in two side by side. And I could have made this a disco floor where this thing would just go crazy, which is just like, oh my God, Jay, you're too old for this lighting. But as you can see right now, everything is set to white. So set the glow top to white. So I can have it be any color that I want. Now, as you can see, this is the way the backboard turned out. We Earlier in this video, you guys saw us starting to redo it because of the way it guillotined my internet, which kind of completely derailed the start of this video. I was not intending to have to completely redo the, the plug and all that, but it made me rethink how I wanted to do this. And this turned out phenomenal. Anytime someone comes in this room, they look at this and they go, oh my gosh, this turned out so good. The hutch though, doesn't have a whole lot going on inside of it yet. As you can see, it's pretty much empty. Those are the Philips Hue play lights. Um, I've just got them setting down there and that's what's changing the colors because I have the glass shelves, they'll shine through. Got my Xbox One right here. A lot of people are like, ew, Xbox, whatever. It's a gaming room. My kids come in here, they can play. Um, it's the idea of this room is because it's so big. It's the biggest bedroom in the house that's not the master bedroom. You got the TV, someone could be watching a movie, my daughter, my wife, all three of them can fit in this room while I'm over here playing games. Um, I've got the LG C9. OLED TV, which is absolutely phenomenal. And it's gonna be getting a firmware update very soon for uh, HDMI 2.1 support, which is gonna make it even better when it comes to input lag and refresh rate and all that sort of stuff. Let's go and talk about the elephant in the room. I know a lot of people are gonna be super mad about the fact that I'm using a sound bar and didn't go with some sort of a high-end 
surround sound, making it ultimate. Let me tell you why I didn't. One, this is what's got my smart assistant built in. Two, it sounds freaking phenomenal. If you guys are anywhere near Best Buy or anywhere that's got the Bose Soundbar 700 on display, you have to agree, no matter how good of an audio, how high end of an audiophile you think you are, this sounds great. When I really want to get that home theater feel, on the other side of this wall is my upstairs loft, which has my other LG OLED with my DevTech 9000 series, Dolby Atmos, THX, all the DTSs and stuff with my Pioneer Elite uh, receiver and everything hooked up to it, with my Super Cubes and all that, that will shake the entire neighborhood apart. When I want that level of sound, I just go out there. But watching movies and stuff on this has been phenomenal. We've already, my wife and I have already had movie night in here and it's great. The sub that is uh, separate, but you can get, it's got glass top, it's not polished plastic. It looks great, it sounds great. Anyone that I know that has come and listened to this so far that has any sort of opinion on sound has just been blown away by how good it is. It's not cheap, but it's also not Sonos. I've kind of lost interest in some of the Sonos stuff. I have it in my master bedroom. I have it in my downstairs living room, great room. And I feel like Sonos hasn't kind of kept up with the times. They haven't increased their sound quality enough. That's why Bose got my money this time around. And a lot of people were probably looking at that going, Jay, aren't you just a little too old to be playing a Switch? You're never too old to play video games. You're not too old to play Legend of Zelda and all that sort of stuff, which I do play on there. Now regarding digital assistants, I know a lot of people are super sketchy about that with the always on, always listening kind of a thing. And I get that. Um, I lead a pretty boring life. And if anyone were listening in, all they're gonna hear is me basically telling my kids go to bed and being frustrated over common core math with my daughter's homework. It's nothing worth listening in on. So I'm perfectly fine with the digital assistants, but because there are so many different light sources and nothing's hooked up to a, a switch, with the exception of this light right here, which I leave always on, I wanted things to be simple. So for instance, you know, we got friends over, we got Mark here, the member of the Destiny 2 build. Hi. So let's say I'm just sitting here and suddenly it's just like, okay, we wanna watch a movie or something. So you could, you know, I set up routines for basically a bunch of different scenarios that this room could be used for. So uh, let's watch a movie. So what she'll do now Enjoy is she'll dim all the lights, make it very much like a movie theater with the kind of a warm orange glow. I've got kind of very soft, sort of a violet color going right there on the, on the bottom of the hutch. And then if I had my remote control over here, which I can't reach, unfortunately voice control doesn't work on this TV as it's set up. But we've got backlight on the TV, everything's kind of dim, but it's perfect for watching TV. Um, I've got routines set up for gaming too. And probably one of the most important one, Alexa, let's get busy. Where you? Come back. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be putting an Xbox Series X1, Series X2, whatever it's called in here eventually. Um, PS5 and all that sort of stuff. Cause I want when people come over, there's any choice of entertainment that they want. But for me, obviously I'm a computer geek and that is what this is. Now, some of you might be looking at this going, what the heck? Why don't you have two monitors? I always had two monitors. In fact, in my old studio, I had two 34 inch ultra wides. This right here is LG's new 38 inch IPS, one millisecond gray to gray, true one, true one millisecond gray to gray um, widescreen panel. I wanted to have a single panel that filled out the space nicely, but didn't make it over cluttered. I've gotten really used to using a single panel over the last year, and I'm really enjoying just a single ultra wide, but I want to start doing live streaming and stuff once again. So I've got my Elgato stream deck right down here. Um, it's not hooked up yet, but I'll be learning how to use this, but I've also got the hue lights on the shelves that you saw how we did. They're here, they're here, they're behind the desk. And what's cool is I do have a live streaming scene where it will dim all of the lights in the back part of the room. It will turn on the color when it comes to the, um, the nano leaf canvas back there. It will turn on colors in the hutch and behind the TV but it will turn these white to give me a soft box type of illumination on me. So that when I used to have the terrible color and the ugly face of mine being lit by the monitor looked terrible, I now have some sort of lighting to back or to front light me when I'm live streaming. And then I recently added these canvas over here just to add a little bit of more dynamic lighting and shadows. Plus they shine right on my headphones, which we'll get to in a second. For sound over here, 
These are the Yamaha HS5 studio monitors. I was a little torn on these. I was going to get the iLoud um, MTMs, I think they're called, they're called, something like that. Yeah, I think it was MTM. MTM, but the problem, or the multimedia, yeah, MTM. The problem was I ordered, I ordered them thinking they were a pair and there was 350 bucks for one and I was like, okay, that's not going to fly. So I returned the one, got these two for a total of $400, which is not, again, not cheap, but studio monitors, they're accurate. That's what they're designed to be. They sound amazing. They fill out the space. They look good. The white cones really kind of fit in with the decor, but the black finish on here doesn't make them pop too much. Um, and they are being powered off of my Monoprice Monolith THX um, amplifier right here. This is the same amplifier that I'm also using to power my headphones when I do switch over to headphone mode. So the nice thing about this is it's not balanced, but it does give me a DAC built in as well. So it's a DAC to the computer. Uh, it's running over optical actually. And then I can set it to either line out or headphone out, giving me one solution for headphones and speakers. And then I've got my Scarlett Solo on top, which is what I'm using to amplify or to preamp and capture and interface my SM7B Shure microphone right here for when I do live streaming. I've wanted this microphone since the day I started my channel. It's one of the cheapest microphones you can get in terms of being studio grade. Something that you would actually see in a real FM studio, XM studio, whatever. This is what they would have. Um, they can definitely scale up from here, but it's better than any mic I've ever had. And when I started my channel, I used to live stream more often and I was like, if I ever get to a position where I can have a Shure SM7B, I'm gonna get it. Well, here it is. And so it's sitting on my Rode PSA1 mic stand, which uh, obviously now you guys can see the, some of the theme here as I'm planning on doing some live streaming and stuff. So here's my Bismarck model. Now finally a place to display it, which means I've got to start my Yamato. Um, we got some camera stuff up here, just some product boxes. This will probably change over time. One of the hardest things to do when you do a space like this is decorate it. And for me, um, I'm not very good at that. I'm not very good at like the small things. And I think over time that'll sort of mature. But as you can see, Nebula sitting here in her spot and just, I mean, who can deny looking at that? I was gonna do a smaller computer over here. And we both kind of agreed that that would have been a terrible idea because it would have looked super empty. Um, but that's also the reason why I have two sets of Alex desks under or drawers underneath it. A lot of people are triggered by that set of drawers on the right right there saying, Jay, how the heck do you reach that? Like that. That barely clears the thing, but like that. So those have more of a purpose of holding the weight of Nebula than being anything else. And I figured, well, if I'm gonna get a, a, some sort of a stand there anyway, might as well be additional storage. So those, that will be for things that aren't used very often, but I need to have nearby, or I can easily get to it if I need to. These drawers are perfectly accessible. And because these, these tables are mounted together, I didn't want to just do a leg or something back there, having it then kind of start leaning over time. So I just did two Alex drawers side by side with these little uh, couch leg standoffs that I've already showed before, getting the desk up just a little bit, making it so that I can easily have the weight supported. This is the most recent modification that I did. Super simple. $16, uh, 14 inch keyboard sliders that you can get off Amazon. And then I went down to Home Depot and I got a piece of wood, cut it down to the length that I wanted, stained it with the stain that matched the desktop as close as I could find. This is birch, this is um, veneer. So that's why it has perfect grain because it's veneer. And as you can see, it matches the tone perfectly. And this is gonna be basically another computer I have set up for when I'm doing a live streaming, I can monitor my stream and all that. And then when I want, I can just close it and push it out of the way. It also sticks out slightly like that because I should have got the 18 inch drawer sliders and not the 14 inch. That way I would have more you know, distance to pull out and still, you get what I'm saying. It'd be able to come out and still be able to open the laptop lid. But this is a 13 inch um, Surface 2 and it's perfectly fine. I asked you guys recently on Twitter about headphones and somebody that's wanting to start to, to experience some audiophile grade stuff you guys had a lot of things to suggest. We already had a set of Sennheiser 6XXs, which uh, we did through Mastrop. This is the Mastrop edition one. And they sound great, but I wanted more. So we had the Focal Elexes, and they sound great as well, but they're also $600. So I kind of did a lot of my own research. Phil 
is a huge fan of his High Feynman um, 4XXs. But a step up from that, these are the High Feynman Sunduras. And let me tell you right now, once you go planar, you don't go back. You don't go backer. You don't go backer. <laughs> they're not perfect, and they're extremely open back because they need to be able to vibrate that that you know planar layer right there, the magnetic layer. If you cover the back with your hand or you lean over and something blocks the back, the, the sound changes on them dramatically, but I don't really do that. And I am extremely in love with these headphones. They were $350, just over half the price of the Elexes, but way better in terms of sound quality, in our opinion. Obviously, if you're an audiophile, you may not agree. You may be like, no, you need to get the Odysseys or you need to get the blah, 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 or the LCD threes or... That's the cool thing about sound is we're all subjective and those don't destroy the bank account while giving you a pretty good return on your investment. So one of the questions I got was, Jay, did you still have room for your racing sim? And that was definitely a prereq for me. I had to be able to have it in my game room. So here it is. This is the same setup that you guys have already seen me do a whole video about. If you haven't seen it, just go to my, my channel and search for Fanatec. And you'll see, this is our game rig. So this is an Abutter Revolution gaming chair cockpit. And this is a Fanatec Club, Spe Club Sport V2 steering wheel with the uh, Club Sport pedals. And then this is just a cheap steering wheel I got off like eBay to put on here because I wasn't, I should probably get a better one. That's awfully flimsy. Jeez, I didn't notice that. Wow, I should get a better one. This is why you don't buy cheap steering wheels and put them in your car, get into a car crash and you're gonna eat that in your sternum. Anyway, um, this one is also compatible with Xbox. I don't use it with Xbox, but it, it is. And what's cool about it is if I ever wanna switch the wheel and get different kinds, it's got this quick release right here and I could take this off. This is like a GT steering wheel and I could put on like an F1 style steering wheel. I could put on a big giant NASCAR steering wheel with no buttons and stuff. Um, but it's extremely robust and high quality. Um, the pedals also are load cell, so they've got resistance that I can adjust to make them like feel more like a street car or a race car with no power brakes. Um, and then obviously I've got my Oculus Rift S hooked up to it. I don't do VR in here. I've got an Oculus Quest up there, actually. Still in the box. Still in the box, because I, I bought it for myself for Christmas, but I haven't really had a chance to set it up yet. Um, that's gonna be for the family wanting to play like Beat Saber and stuff like that. So I have to order one of those leather <laughs> face masks yeah. so I don't get turned into a sweaty sponge with all the foam. Um, but this basically does nothing but um, provide me VR for my racing sims. And for that, I do a lot of eye racing. I do eye racing for more realistic training when I'm practicing for when I'm going out on track. <laughs> These are me driving. <laughs> um, I, do a, I do as much driving as I possibly can on track. Um, my ZL1 right there is doing about 163 miles an hour into the bank, so that's cool. And then the Z is fun too. But anyway, uh, it's it's a <laughs> that's so sad no, story. it's it's a different car with a different purpose, but it's still fun to drive. It really is. There's no boring cars, boring drivers only. So, um, but the VR gives me an opportunity with this setup and how realistic it is to practice without the risk, if that makes sense. So yeah, it's fun. Phil's played on this before. Um, our friend Mark has played on it and it's, everyone gets off this and goes, wow, that's so cool. This one's probably gonna be a point of contention. This is a Logitech G915 wireless gaming mechanical keyboard. Obviously it's RGB, I have it set to blue to match um, Nebula over there. And then I've got the Wireless Pro gaming mouse. These both use their light speed connection, which is ultra fast, but also ultra short distance. I'm gonna have to move the receiver to my USB hub that's under the desk to get it closer because when I turn on VR and my controllers turn on, they interfere with the keyboard and the keyboard drop, drops out. But a lot of you saw the pictures of this on um, Twitter and were like, how do you feel about that keyboard? How do you feel about that keyboard? Enough people asked to where I think I'm gonna do a standalone keyboard review um, just to talk about whether or not it's worth it. It's very expensive but I legitimately wanted wireless because of the super ultra clean setup that I've got going here. And I didn't want to drill a hole through the table to put wires down through. I want to be able to kick back in the chair and lean back and have the keyboard on my lap and not on the desk. Um, so yeah, I'll do a video about this because it's fairly new and it's a lot of people are just, that's way too expensive. It's a waste of money and there's very, a lot of dust. Anyway, it's a waste of money and you know what? It might very well be, but I made an aesthetic choice here that so far I'm happy with this performance, but it's not perfect. So you guys will get a video about that. And then this little pad that I've got it sitting on this game pad is just a generic Amazon version of a lot of the gaming pads that you can get. And they come in different sizes and stuff. So that's, um, 
that's what I'm using for that. So that is kind of it. I mean, the whole point of this, this room sat empty all year long. And my studio or my studio that I had downstairs, which was my, you know, my game room was a catch all. So this was a good time for me to just sort of get things in shape. And I'm happy. This is a, this is becoming a good place in the house for us to hang out. Having a dedicated place to play games is awesome. My kids are gamers. My wife, not so much, but she can sit in here and relax while I'm playing games if she wants. That way, if I'm playing computer games and she wants to watch TV and be near, it's not like one of us has to sacrifice. Okay, I can't play games. I gotta watch her, you know, watch TV, but she can watch TV while I'm playing games. It's cool. My kids have started to think that this is their room. That's why that keypad lock is on the door, which already has worked a couple of times. I'll be sitting in here and I hear, the door's locked. And I'm like, yeah, that's the point. And they're, oh man. And they go like walking down the stairs. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any suggestions though on what I could do to take this to the next level, I'm kind of curious what you guys would do. I think it turned out phenomenal. And unfortunately, the timing couldn't have been more perfect considering we're gonna be probably spending some more time at home than we had planned on. I was supposed to be on vacation at the time that this video went live, but I'm probably gonna be sitting in here right now while you're watching this. I mean, by the time you guys see this, it's time has already passed because scheduling and all that sort of stuff. And we're taking the rest of the month off anyway for all, everything going on. Um, I have no problems being in here. It's comfortable. In fact, I'm too, it's too comfortable. Sometimes I sit down at my desk and I'll do something like this, game time. And then when it's all super moody like this, I start to fall asleep at my desk. That could just be the boomer in me. I sit still long enough, I fall asleep, but that's okay. Obviously the room is relaxing if I can't stay awake in it. Sound off in the comments below what you guys think about the setup. What would you do differently if it were yours? And more importantly, uh, if you've got any links or anything to your setups, share them. I don't know if YouTube's gonna block the links, but maybe not, I don't know. Share them on Twitter. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.